a formal introduction and though we are brothers and sisters in Christ I thought it would be nice if you would know which sister was here tonight to minister God's word my name is Pastor Roman A. Lashley I am here with you from the Pocono Mountains with my sons Chris and Craig Lashley and another member of my worship team back at our church in our my mom is also here, my stepdad and my little brother. So we have, um, we have been obedient to God and traveled the highways and byways in a four hour drive to fellowship with you tonight. So I am prayerful that God have his perfect way, amen. I asked the Lord, what would you have me to minister to your people concerning and the Lord told me that he was bringing his people into a season where we needed to begin to shake off the residue from our carnal living. And though we have been brought with a price, been saved and been filled with the Holy Ghost, I hope, um, there is often times that there remains residue. And so the Lord wants to introduce you to what Jesus the Christ has called deliverance from carnal thinking and the residues of carnal living. Amen? So we are going to start the message tonight in the book of Haggai. And I'm going to, I am 5 foot 11, so this pulpit, the pulpit at my church, the thing is all the way up here, so you have to, you have to bear with me, okay? I'm going to begin the message in Haggai 2, and I'll be reading from verses 5 through 7. And when you're there, if you will just say amen. I don't want to leave anybody behind. Haggai 2. Verses 5 through 7. According to the word that I have covenanted with you, when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear, for thus says the Lord of hosts. Once more I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory. Now, Haggai in this scripture was prophesying the coming of Jesus Christ. But in addition to prophesying Jesus Christ, he's talking about filling our temples with the full glory of God. But notice before this filling takes place, he says, I'm going to shake up some things. I'm going to shake up some things because I have to shake until there's nothing left but what's of me. Amen? And then he is able to come because light and darkness can't share, can't share the same space. So though God may have snatched us and delivered us from Egypt, we have to be realistic in our thinking because we have to, we have to go to work every day. We have to interact with people every day. We are faced with carnalities on a daily basis. We are faced with fleshly activities on a daily basis. We live in a society where society has taught us what has been deemed the norm. And, and so you know, I, I'm a social worker, so these are things that I look at. When I look at even my clients, I see what society has cultivated in them. But God is saying tonight that he wants to shake off the norms of society. He wants to shake off the fears, the hurts, the past offenses, everything that comes and hinders us from experiencing the fullness of God. Amen? And so I don't think for one second that you're here by accident tonight. This may be a little crowd, but I said to my sons on the way here, my, my oldest son said, I sure hope the people came out. 
And I said, well, if there's five people, that means God called us to, to bring the word for five people. Amen. So tonight there, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 15, 15 souls are at stake tonight. Amen? So, okay, amen. Now, I'm going to try to stay. I'm trying to rush through this a little bit because I'm watching this clock. When I'm at home in my church, because I'm the pastor, I can just, my son stands in the back with the cards with the numbers, and I just kind of go like this. But I'm going to stay decent and in order tonight. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52, verse 2. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose yourself from the bands of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus says the Lord. Now we need to ask ourselves, because God is saying, I'm presenting to you freedom tonight. So you need to examine and, and say, Lord, show me myself. At Show me the bands that are around my neck. Because we don't all share the same bands. Some have fear around our neck. Some have anxiety around our neck. Some have depression around our neck. Some have hurt from past offenses. Some have unforgiveness around our neck. Some, we all have bands that bind us. But what people don't take into account is those same bands that keep people out because you do know we do this as a defense mechanism. These are things that we create to, to create defense mechanisms to keep ourselves in a comfort zone. But what we don't stop to realize is, is when we do that, we're not just keeping people out and keeping the glory of God out. We're keeping ourselves in. And God wants to use us. God wants you to be a vessel. God has placed a ministry in everyone's belly. There's a ministry. If nothing else, there's the ministry of evangelism. We've all been called to evangelize about the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. We've all been called to tell somebody what Jesus Christ has done for us. I'm sure everybody here has a testimony about the goodness of God. Amen? And so we need to really start to examine, Lord, show me what this band is around my neck. Is it fear? Lord, is it fear that binds me? Lord, is it anxiety that binds me? Have I forgiven my mother? Have I forgiven my father? Have I, yes, 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 because there are some people who have not forgiven their parents. We didn't all have picture-perfect childhoods, amen? And these are things that hinder us from the fullness of God. And he wants us to experience him in, I love this, in totality. His riches in totality. His glory in totality. He wants us to experience it. So he said, I'm going to shake up a thing. And everywhere you look, I'm trying desperately to stay here too, guys. I'm trying, look, I'm trying, I'm like, <laughs> um, everywhere you look in the Bible where they talk about shaking, they are talking about shaking, God shaking a thing until nothing remains that is not of him. So this shaking, there's something that takes place in this shaking. When I looked up the definition of shaking, it's to disrupt homeostasis or equilibrium that's the intent that's what God intends for it to do it intend he intends to shake up some things he intends to shake those things up and when he finishes everything that's not of him will have been shaken off amen now I preached this message at my church and and by the by midway through the message there were people running up and down the aisles and they were literally, because guess what? These are, these are points of contact, and, and God wants us acted out because he honors that. 
He honors that. Amen? Jesus. Okay. I need water. Can somebody bless God water? Acts, the book of Acts, chapter, chapter 13. Now, let me just ask you this, and you be honest with me. How many people, since they've been introduced to Christ, have gone back and tried to minister Christ to someone else or tell someone else about what Christ has done? And people look at you and they're not convinced. And maybe even the people that you tried, because it's easy to minister to people you don't know, because they don't know your story. They only see you after God has cleaned you up, shaken you off, and then you look like this picture-perfect Christian. But the hardest people to minister to are people who've known you prior to you receiving Christ. And you go to them, and they're not convinced. They're not convinced that you're saved. And, you, and I know this happens. I've heard it over and over and over again. And the, and the Christian says, God, what is it? What is it that they don't see in me? Why, why aren't they convinced that I'm not the same person I used to be? Why aren't they convinced that I don't go to the same places I used to go? Why aren't they convinced that I don't want to deal with the same people I used to deal with? Why? You say why. You know why? Because there's still residue left. God has not done that final shaking off. He has not shaken it off because here's what happens. When that piece of deliverance is put into place, one of two things happen. Either they flee from you and they don't want to be around you because light and darkness can't share the same space, or either what? They submit themselves to the Holy Ghost that lives on the inside of you. One of the two. But they won't call out your past anymore. If anything, they'll say, my God, what has God done? So God, again, is calling us to this place. This is deliverance, people. This is deliverance. In any place that I go to preach, God has me to preach deliverance. Because deliverance is necessary. It's necessary. The body of Christ does not want to acknowledge that we need deliverance. And newsflash, it's a process. It never stops. We never arrive. When you arrive, it's time to go home to glory. So if you're sitting and you're thinking, I don't need deliverance. I've been deliverance. That's delivered. That's a trick of the enemy. Because there's always something else that we need to be delivered from. Amen? Okay, what did I say? I said Acts 13, 51. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them and came to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Now, the reason why I'm pulling these scriptures out for you is because I want you to see in each and every scripture that we look at, there's something that takes place before they experience the fullness. There's deliverance that takes place before they experience the fullness of God. Here, it says, then the disciples were filled with joy and, and the Holy Spirit. After they had shaken off the dust from their feet from the carnal living, from those friends that aren't convinced, that keep trying to tempt you to come back from that job that tries to stir up that part of you that you want to die, that you are practicing killing every day. When you go to work, they try to stir that very thing up in you. Your children, who you've been trying to practice disciplining yourself to use a different approach with your children, those things stir you up. Why? That's why we have to be every day trying to crucify our flesh again. That, that's why. 
That's why deliverance is a process. That's why it never stops. Because we have to go through this all the time. Being mindful, reminding ourselves, I could do this this way, and five years ago I would have done that that way, but now today I celebrate the new me. I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to, I'm going to be a witness for Christ Jesus. I'm going to exhibit his character attributes. What are his character attributes? The fruits of the Spirit. We're supposed to be walking in that. But God said before we can fully even possess his character attributes, we have to shake off the past. Amen. Amen? Shake off the past. Matthew 10, 14. I'm going to go up a little bit more. Love this scripture. And when you go, I'm going to start at 12. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it's not worthy, let peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Whoever is not convinced that you are a new creature in Christ, they are talking about going into places where there are unsaved people. They're not talking about the saved people. They're talking about when you go into places and there are people who are still in the world. And they're not convinced about who you are and the message that you bring. If they receive you in peace, then you bless that place. But if they don't, you call your peace back unto you. You leave. You shake the dust from off your feet. You shake off their thinking, that mindset. How many people know spirits jump? Spirits jump. This is another reason why we have to constantly be going through deliverance because we interact with people every day and spirits jump. I teach my children who love God, don't be so quick to run and lay hands and pray over people because spirits jump. So you are even shaking off when they don't receive you, you're shaking off even the residue from that encounter. And, go, and, and then once again, you walk into the fullness. Because what do you think happens after you shake and shake and shake and shake and shake and you're always shaking and always shaking? Eventually, the Lord is right. Eventually, there's nothing left that's not of him. But we have ridden on grace for so long. And trust me, I'm a grace. I, I, I thank God for, for the grace of his son, Jesus Christ. But we cannot continue to use grace as an excuse. This is, this is the part of your walk where God is calling you to a place where he's saying, this phase of your deliverance, you must do something. This is the phase where you have to play an active role. This is the part of your deliverance where you have to stand up and take a stand. This is the part of your deliverance where you have to say, I'm not going to be angry anymore. I'm not going to be hurt anymore. I choose to live. I'm not going to die. You have to speak to those dry bones. You have to, you have to do this. Even in your daily confessions, why do you think he says we should have daily confessions? We should have them because that's the part that we play. That's our responsibility. 
Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. So you can't sit with Pastor Romanay 24 hours a day. You can't sit with Dr. Yeager 24 hours a day. So what do you do? You have to talk to your own flesh. You have to minister to your own spirit. You have to pray asking God because some of us don't even know what we need to shake off. So we even have to, in our prayers, Lord, show me myself. Show me my flaws. Show me my character. Show me where I've missed the mark. Show, show me where I didn't miss the mark to. But show me what you desire of me to change that I have the ability to change myself. Because we blame everything on the devil. Not everything is the devil. I'm sorry, it's just not everything's the devil. Sometimes it's just us. Stubbornness, manipulation, control, these are all things that keep us from the fullness of God. Amen? And God wants us tonight. If I didn't do anything else, I drove these four hours to tell you that on tonight, God wants to break those bands from around your neck. He does not want you to leave here the same. He wants you to leave here renewed and refreshed. As we drove in, I saw the signs for revival. Who knows what revival is? There's a reviving that takes place. Those dried up dead bones arise in a revival. New passion is stirred up in a revival. New drive, new commitment fresh anointing, new vision, fresh insight. All of these things take place in revival. So how awesome is it to declare this a revival center? That means everybody who comes through these doors, there should be a shaking off that takes place. And as the shaking off takes place, the fullness and glory of God come upon them and fill them with his presence. Amen. I'm going to get excited. I'm, try, I'm trying to stay in teach mode, and I'm trying not to preach, and I'm trying to stay in my box. I'm behaving. Okay. Um, let's go to Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus is wonderful. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. Amen. Mark 6. Mark 6, 11. And whoever will not receive you nor hear you when you depart from there, shake off the dust under your feet as a testimony against them. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable sorry, for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. What's that mean? You say, Pastor Romane, what does that mean? That means it's not for you to deal with. It's for God to deal with. Stop trying to convince them that you're saved. Stop trying to convince them that you've changed. Stop trying to convince them that you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I know it because we do it. This is what we do. I'm not the same. Why do you keep saying I don't do that? And stop trying to justify yourself. The word of God says the grace of Jesus Christ justifies you. The grace of Jesus Christ redeems you. So why are we trying to redeem and justify ourselves? Why? They don't believe you've changed. Kick the dust from off your feet. Shake off the residue because if you don't shake that off, guess what happens? That stuff stays when you leave out of a place, you leave out in many instances with what was in that atmosphere. You leave out with that stuff having attached itself to you. 
When I go and minister someplace, the first thing I do when I get home is everything comes off and I get in the shower and I have to pray in the Holy Ghost and wash it off because I'm laying hands on people and like I said, things attach themselves. I don't care how holy you are, how sanctified and consecrated you are, this is what happens. So stop trying to convince them. Kick the dust, shake the dust from off your feet. Keep it moving. God has a plan and a purpose. And if they don't believe you now that you've changed, can I be honest with you? That means we need to do more of those prayers where we're saying, Lord, show me myself. Because are we really exhibiting the full glory of God? When people look at us, do they see Christ? I've seen people in the world who've been delivered from hard drug addiction. And there's no residue of it. If they didn't share the testimony, you'd never know. So if we haven't convince them what you shouldn't be trying to convince them anyway what's the word of God say your life is supposed to be a living epistle of God's restoration power not our mouth and us trying to validate amen okay I'm going to start trying to bring it home Hebrews 12 going to start at 25. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates removal. You see it? Indicates removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Did you see it? Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably, acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. So God is showing us, I, I don't want to hurt you. I just want to shake off everything that's not of me. When I finish shaking you, all that will be left standing is what is of me. Because why? 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 Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. He has work for you people. He has work for you. And let me say this in these few minutes that I, that I have left. Let me say this to you. How many people know that the church is God's government? We are God's government on earth. How many people know that this is the third and last day that we live in? We are, the, we are his remnant people. And so guess what? 
what was acceptable in ministry in 1970 is not acceptable in this last day. God is holding us to a higher standard because the work that we have to do is greater. The demons that we have to fight are greater. This, the work is greater. So he has to have us go through, listen, this shaking is nothing but the refiner's fire. This is the fire of the Holy Ghost that is shaking off and burning away everything that's not of him, purifying us so that we can in fact operate as his government. What is a government? God says his church is called to be a governing and territorial body. What happens when a government comes into a region, God's government, he sends his government into a region. That entire region is supposed to become subject to the anointing on your life. When we ride into a city, and I believe this from the depths of my core. When I ride into a city, the witches and warlocks are put on notice that I'm there. Because they know that I'm coming and that those spirits, they will submit themselves to the anointing on my life. Every knee must bow to the name of Jesus. So God has to take us through this shaking off, this refiner's fire, so that he can use us. There's demons you have to cast out. There's some people you've got to snatch out of the pits of hell. There's some people you've got to snatch out of Satan's arms. There's principalities that govern entire regions, and you've got to be girded up enough for you to come against those principalities. But if you are still living with the carnal mindset and you still have the residue on yourself from carnal living, guess what? Those principalities will chew you up and spit you out. Anything the enemy does, he has to have legal right to access. How does he gain legal right? He gains legal right when we are operating in sin. So we want to get those carnal things off and put on the full armor of God, okay? Amen? Amen. Now, I just want to make sure I don't leave without, let me say this to you. Can I come around here? I don't, I don't want anyone to leave the same. And not that when I arrived, you were so broken and battered. But God said he takes us from glory to glory to glory and so I believe that if my father would have me drive four hours to fellowship with you I believe that there is something I have for you so I don't want you to leave the same way that you came in I would ask my mother I have some a gold bag there's a small thing of oil if you need prayer if you need prayer I want you to come up and receive prayer. If you need healing, the Holy Ghost is here. He's here right now. He's a right now God. And let me say this, don't let the enemy trick you into not getting what God has for you tonight. Don't let him trick you. If there's a need, you need to come up and come to the altar and let me pray for you. Let me pray for you tonight. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, most sovereign God. Most sovereign and holy God. We thank you tonight for your grace and your mercy, O oh God. Father, we thank you tonight for this holy Sabbath, O oh God. Yes, we've entered the gates with thanksgiving, O oh God. And we've entered into your courts with praise. 
Father, Father, we declare the majesty tonight of your son, Jesus. And we invite in your Holy Spirit, oh God, to have your perfect way on tonight. Father, touch us tonight, oh God. Heal us tonight, oh God. Renew us tonight, oh God. Restore us tonight, oh God. You alone, Jesus, are the repairer of the breach. So we thank you tonight that there be no breaches, oh God. No separation, oh God. We thank you, oh God. And we stand in the unity of the faith, trusting and believing, oh God, that you are enough and you are the supplier of our needs, oh God, according to your riches and glory in your son, Christ Jesus. We thank you for the healing anointing, oh God. We thank you for the prophetic anointing, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that strongholds be torn down, oh God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yorobosia sayarabasia. Yoroboshi esete. Stir them up, God. Yorobosia. Yorobosia erebasia. Yorobosia sete erebosia sa. Erebosia arabasia. Yorobosia sa. Yorobosia. Hey, Yorobosia se. Yarabasia arabo. Yorobosia sa. Erebasia. Shake it off. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Fire. I see the gift of evangelism. Fire, 